last problem. We're going to go through our same steps. Step one, bring everything to one side. That's already been done for us here. Excellent. Step two, highlight what I'm solving for. I am finding less than zero. So I'm going to find the negative sections of my graph below the x-axis. Step three, factor. Now this is not a quadratic, which means factoring is a little more difficult, but you've already done this. To factor this, we just have to do synthetic division and write out our multiplication statements, and that will help us factor it. But before I can do my synthetic division, I need to list some possibilities that I can try out with this synthetic division. So remember, to list your possibilities, you do the factors of the constant divided by the factors of the leading coefficient. So my factors of my constant to multiply to 20, I have 1 and 20, 2 and 10, and 4 and 5. That all multiplies to 20. All over the factors of my leading coefficient, 1 and 2. So list out these possibilities. 1 divided by 1 is 1. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. 20 divided by 1 is 20. 20 divided by 2 is 10. 2 divided by 1 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, which I already have on the list. 10 divided by 1 is 10, which I've already got. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 4 divided by 1 is 4. Don't have that one yet. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. Already got that one in my list. 5 divided by 1 is 5, which, oh look, I already have right there. And 5 divided by 2 is 5 halves. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 16 different possibilities here. So here's where I would like you to pause the video and try this out on your own. Do the synthetic division until you find one that works, until you find one that gives you a remainder of zero. Once you have a remainder of zero, come on back and we'll see how, and then we'll talk about finishing this problem up. So pause the video now and go ahead and try it out. Let's see how you did. I just went through the line. I tried positive one first, didn't work. Tried negative one, it didn't work. Then I tried positive one half, and that one did work. So when I put one half in, this is what I got out. So this is now a quadratic, meaning I can factor this. So first thing I notice in my factoring is that everything has a two in common. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that two out, x squared minus nine x plus 20. And, just a little tidbit, rem reminder that you can actually put this 2 back into this one to make it 2x minus 1. You don't have to put that 2 back into that one. It just makes it look prettier and you don't have any fractions anymore. Now that I took the 2 out, this is my easier method of factoring, nothing in front of my x squared. So I multiply to 20 and add to negative 9. That gives me negative 4 and negative 5. And ta-da, this is all factored. So step 3, factor, check. I still have my less than 0, so now step 4 is to get my x-intercepts. So set each factor equal to 0. And I get x equals 1 half, x equals 4, and x equals 5. Now, before I make my sign array, I'm going to double check two things, and I want you to get in the habit of double checking this. First, double check your multiplicity. All of these zeros have a one in their exponent, so they're all multiplicity one. So that means I don't have to duplicate any lines. So we're good there. Second thing I want you to get in the habit of checking is if you have a negative leading coefficient. We look up here, it is a positive 2, so I do not have a negative leading coefficient. If you did, you would put that line of negatives up at the top. So I don't have any negative leading coefficient, don't have any multiplicities, so I can just write my x-intercepts over here on the side. 
and do my number lines. So this number line is for one half, so I'm going to put the zero at one half. Left is negative, right is positive. Then this number line is at four, so I'm going to put the zero here at four. Left is negative, right is positive. This number line is at five, so I'm going to put the zero there at five. Left is negative, right is positive. And now I look down my columns. Three negatives makes a negative. Two negatives and a positive makes a positive. One negative and two positives makes a negative. And three positives makes a positive. If I went too fast for you there, one thing you can think of for three negatives, two negatives are going to make a positive, and then a negative and a positive makes that negative. Basically, shortcut rule, if you have an odd number of negatives, it's negative. If you have an even number of negatives, it's positive. So let's remind us what we were looking for. We wanted less than zero, our negative sections. So that's that section and that section. So I have from negative infinity up to one half, parentheses, because I am not equal to, and union from four to five. Those are my negative sections, so those will be the pieces of the graph that are below the x-axis or negative. That's our final answer. You are officially done with lesson 2.6. You can get started on your homework.